Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leila. On this channel, I talk about personal development and my life here in Seoul, South Korea. The premise of today's video is basically me admitting to you that I have violated a very important personal finance principle, which is thou shall not upgrade your lifestyle the minute you start making more money. So if you want to know more about that, if you're interested about budgeting and spending money in Korea, then keep on watching. I'm the kind of person who likes to talk about money. I do not shy away from the subject. I actually quite enjoy it. And if you look around my channel, I have two money related videos right now, uh, I believe. Uh, the first one was about like how much money I saved prior to coming to Korea and how I anticipated my budget to be. And the second video is about my life as a, as a student at Sogang University and how much money I spend during the pandemic. So things have obviously changed. I went from a one active source of income to two active sources of income. So I took some liberties with the way I enjoy my life, but mostly it's also because there's no more pandemic. So my budgeting such as transportation, entertainment have changed. So I wanna kind of like go over that with you, but the purpose is not really about me sharing how much money I spend. It's mostly so that I can give you some tips and advices in those different categories so that when you come here, you know what to expect but also like tips on how to make things easier for you as well. So yeah. All right, so let's get started with rent, which is by far the biggest expense that I have. My rent is 650,000 Korean won and the deposit that I gave was uh, 5 million Korean won. I am on my second year here, so I resigned my lease this year and surprisingly, he did not increase the rent. So I'm like, thank God. I'm still paying the same price. As far as my utilities, it has increased by 20,000 Korean won or so. So the way it works is that the building puts together everything like um, utilities, internet, trash, amenities, fees together, and they send you a bill every month. And right now it's between 130 to 150,000 Korean won. So basically those two things are what I pay every month in terms of housing. If you are curious in the type, um, if you are curious about the type of environment I live in, in Korea it's called an office tell and I have a video on my channel. If you want to live by yourself in a safe environment and not spend too much money, because obviously we cannot afford to live in apartments and it doesn't really make sense anyway, an office tell would probably be the best option for you. In terms of, and that's the biggest part, is you have to give a deposit. And for an office tell, the deposit is between 5 to 10 million Korean won with a rent between 650 to 900,000 Korean won. So make sure you save that money. That way you can live more comfortably. Otherwise, your other options would be Goshiwon or maybe finding a random roommate somewhere on Craigslist. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to my phone. I am with KT. I selected their cheapest plan at the time and it was 48,000 Korean won, which is what I'm currently paying and I'm locked in a contract for two years. However, after talking to my colleagues this year, I realized that I was kind of ripped off. <laughs> um, basically, they told me that for what I'm getting and what I'm paying, it just doesn't make sense and that there are options for me to pay twice as less for the same type of service. But I have to wait until my contract expires in order for me to move on to something cheaper, uh, most likely with a different company. So we will look into that. I hope I won't have to change my phone number because I really like it. So we'll, we'll see. But right now, 48,000 Korean won every month is what I pay. All right, so let's move on to health insurance. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to be all over the place. There's no specific order to my budgeting process anyway. So my journey with health insurance was actually pretty interesting. I came as a student, right? So I was at Sogang University and Sogang University gives you that kind of insurance that sounds like travel insurance. You know what I'm talking about? That doesn't really serve a purpose. Anyway, so for six months, you have that. And then after six months, you are eligible for the Korean National Health Insurance. And they give you a 50% discount as a student. So I was paying 50,000 Korean won every month. Now that I'm working, I, I had to switch. Basically, when I called, the lady over the phone told me there were three options. Option number one, my company pays for everything. Option number two, I do 50-50 with my company. Option number three, 
my company doesn't pay anything and I pay the health insurance myself. So basically the company had to decide and luckily for me, my company is paying for my health insurance so I don't have to worry about that anymore. If I were to do it by myself, I believe if I remember correctly, I would have paid 150,000 Korean won every month. So yeah, I'm not about that life. So I'm very, very grateful it's being taken care of for me. All right, so let's move on to transportation. Transportation is actually what surprised me the most. I was not expecting to spend that much money. I hover around 120,000 Korean won every month. Now, granted, I go to work, right? So Monday to Friday, back and forth. And now that there's no pandemic, I go out more. I do more activities outside. And considering that a one-way trip, whether you combine buses and train, it's around 1,300 Korean won. So you kind of add it up to have an idea of how much money you could expect to spend based on your lifestyle. So it's 120,000 Korean won for me. Now, a tip that I would give you, I know most people, especially like tourists or foreigners, when they get to Korea, they get those tea money passes that you can recharge. If you are here long-term and you open a bank account, make sure you request that your debit card also be a transportation card. That way you can just, you know, tap that debit card every time you use transportation and then the bank every two weeks will send you a text message saying, hey, this is how much money we're going to uh, take from your bank account on this specific day. And then that's it. You don't have to worry about recharging anything. And all you have to do is give the bank a deposit of like 30,000 Korean won, which is nothing. And uh, that's it. So it simplifies your life and you don't have to worry about charging your card because that is extremely annoying. All right, so let's talk about food. That has kind of, I would say my mindset around food has changed a lot. I remember when I first got here, I really wanted to cook. And uh, you know, I got my habit from Boston. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna cook here in Korea. So I would do my grocery and cook. But I realized two things and number one, I was eating the same thing over and over again and I was getting very tired of it. I couldn't cook any Korean food because I don't know how to and whatever I'm used to eating, it's not easily found here. So I was eating the same thing over and over again and I got tired of that. Number two, um, I just didn't have time. Especially when I started working, I just couldn't picture myself being in a kitchen for like an hour and wasting time. I mean, granted, I could be like listening to a podcast or an audio book or a YouTube video, but still it was time taking out of my schedule and I couldn't afford to waste the time. So I found a solution which I'm using this app called Greeting and I'm gonna put a video somewhere so you can see it. Basically, they cook Korean food or any type of food actually, but I'm just interested in the Korean food part and uh, it's like a meal plan type of thing. You go on the app, they show you the menu for the entire week. You select the dishes that you're interested in and they deliver the food, usually uh, three times a week. And um, I've been eating like super healthy Korean dishes that way and I'm very happy, especially considering the price of like a meal, which is 8,500, which I believe is very reasonable. You get a salad and then you get the meal and then obviously I have to make rice on the side, but I'm very happy with this solution. So this is what I'm doing. And right now it is costing me around 350,000 Korean won just for that. And then I have to still buy my milk, my bread and things like that. So you add another 100 on top of it. Um, yeah, so that's my, my food budget. I, you know, food is so important to me that I told myself I am not going to compromise on that. Whatever it is that I want to eat, I'm just going to go and eat it. And um, if I need to save money elsewhere, I will do that. But when it comes to food, mm -mm, it's not happening. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the second category, which is a delivery. Delivery for me is something I was trying to stay away from. But again, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't hurt right so i have two apps that i'm using and i want to recommend those apps to you as well and i'm going to put a video somewhere to showcase them so the first app is shuttle so shuttle is an app that allows you to order food but 
The good thing about it is if you're a foreigner, you can use a foreign card or you can use PayPal to make your payment. And if you do not speak Korean, you can actually order on this app because everything is in English. And they have a customer service that's mm, on point. They speak English as well and they will assist you all the way from like contacting the driver and making sure the food is delivered, etc. So I'm very satisfied with their service. To be honest, I only use the app whenever I'm craving Indian food. That's the only thing I order on the app. Otherwise, I just use like the Korean app because, you know, I speak and understand Korean so I can manage. And, uh, and for some reason, on the Korean app that I use, I don't have Indian food option near my house. So anyway, long story short, if you're a foreigner, you want to order food, but you don't speak Korean, and you want to use a foreign card, then Shuttle is definitely what I would recommend you use. If you speak Korean and you have a Korean debit card, then obviously Coupon Eats would be a good option. That's what I'm using. And um, yeah, that's whenever I crave junk food. I would say that my ordering outside or my delivery budget is around 100,000 Korean won every month. Yeah, I love food. All right, so let's move on to entertainment. And entertainment in my life comes in twofold. So entertainment, one aspect of it is basically what I would consider meeting friends and having a good time. The truth is I don't have many friends in Korea. Let's just be completely honest. <laughs> Even back in Boston, I didn't have a lot of friends. I am an introvert kind of person and um, I'm not a social butterfly. I I don't have 10,000 acquaintances. I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not about that. I like one-on-one -on -one connections. So usually when I meet friends, I usually meet one friend. It's like I have this one relationship with this one person that I consider a friend and we spend time together. And then sometimes that friend would introduce me to her friends who would then become my acquaintances. But, um, basically I thrive better in one-on-one -on -one connection so my entertainment is meeting that friend and spending time with that friend and usually it's gonna be something super basic as like going to coffee shops that's something that's very very prevalent here in Korea and that coffee shop drinks cost about like 6,000 Korean won same thing with if you want to have a cake or something so it's not expensive to meet someone and have a good time or you can do dinner and the good thing with dinner is you always share the bill, share the food, so that makes it cheaper. Or Korea has so many entertainment options like going to a park, um, going to an exhibition, doing something outdoor, it doesn't really cost much. So my budget to be honest is about like a hundred thousand Korean won and because I'm busy I don't I don't do a lot of like meeting people and having a good time and stuff like that. So yeah. And the reason is because <laughs> I'm passionate about something else that's taking way too much of my time. And it's dancing, 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 dancing. That's basically what I do. Uh, that's where I spend my spare time. And um, I love it. I love it because in my life, I'm in such a masculine, energy type of universe where I'm always like working and and blah 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 and dancing kind of allows me to be more into my feminine energy so I love that and it allows me to relax it allows me to feel good about myself and um, I just love it so when it comes to dancing this is basically how it works so if you are interested in I'm talking about like ball, not ballroom dancing but you know salsa, bachata, kizomba uh, tango, all those stuff, you can take classes in Seoul, everywhere, in Hongdae or in Gangnam. Usually the lessons would last about a month, so each session, and you can expect to pay between 80 to 100,000 Korean won for that session. And usually after class you have what we call the socials, and the social is basically everybody getting together, music is playing, and then you dance with people. Um, or if you're not interested in taking classes, you just want to go dance, then you would go to a club at a certain time and, uh, and then pay 10,000 Korean won and you get a free drink and you dance not all night long, but usually until midnight or 1 a.m. at most, but usually midnight. And uh, that's what I do. It could be during the week or it could be the weekend. Whenever I have free time, I would be dancing. And what I do is kizomba. Kizomba is what I'm very passionate about. 
and uh, that's how I spend my money. So I would say every month I, well, I dance about two to three times at most a week. So you add that up, 30,000 Korean won a week. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in dancing, I would highly recommend you do that here in Seoul. It's not expensive. It's very nice. The environment is very nice. The people are very respectful. I mean, I don't know about other communities, but yeah. Anyway, in the community that I belong in, <laughs> the people are very nice and it's very enjoyable. So that's my entertainment. All right, so let's move on to personal care. Personal care, let's start with my hair. So this hairstyle, for example, is something I can do on my own. So it doesn't really cost me much, except that I have to buy my products on Amazon and ship those products here in Korea. But that's another story for another day. Or I braid my hair. I love doing that. <laughs> it's uh, such a low maintenance type of hairstyle. And I have this wonderful woman who has a hair salon in Itaewon. I'm gonna put her contact information in the description box so that my beautiful black sisters can go there and have their hair done. And so usually when I go there, my hairstyle, I have a very specific one. Uh, it's like a Fulani braid. It's about a hundred thousand Korean won. Um, so yeah, that's what I would spend. In terms of like eyebrow, I go to this very nice place near my house. It costs about 25,000 Korean won. If you want to do a bikini wax, well, not the bikini, I'm talking like a Brazilian wax, it's 70,000 Korean won. Um, yeah, and then if you want to go to Olive Young to buy things like, I don't know, perfume or like lotion and things for your face, etc., I spend about 60 to 100,000 Korean won. Um, every two months or so when it comes to those kind of products. So yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it. I just choose to focus on categories that are recurring in my life. And obviously I spend my money some other ways, like for example, shopping or I don't know, trips and stuff like that, but it was not really relevant in this situation. So if you have any questions as far as like how much things cost in Korea, or if there's a category that you care about that I haven't mentioned, put a comment and I will try to find out what the answer is and provide it. If not, then oops. All right, so that is pretty much it for today. And remember, when it comes to money, try not to spend more than you have. <laughs> um, yeah, or, you know, when it comes to lifestyle, at least what I've understood is that it is okay to upgrade as long as you remain within your means. So. I know I was joking at the beginning of the video, but I haven't really exaggerated or anything. It's just that I give myself permission now to spend more in certain categories that matter to me because now I can justify um, why I'm able to do so. It's like you've earned it, right? So please yourself, enjoy yourself kind of situation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, I will, well, you will see me in the next video. And uh, until then, take very good care of yourselves. Bye. Mwah.